Okay, air conditioning maintenance, right? So Lori was getting some things happening in her eyes, kind of being itchy and in her throat and such. So I kind of looked at what was going on up here. And well, we've got a little bit of mold in the system. We cleaned the filters and the condenser up there or this front side exchanger is kind of dirty. So she's gone off to Home Depot to get some mold control stuff that we're going to spray up in there. And the pre-filter, which goes right here, oh, almost dropped the camera, goes right here. That's just a little fabric folder, uh, filter that we cleaned up. We've done that a number of times. Um, but we're going to get up there on top and uh, vacuum it out and clean everything out. And uh, we're going to be spraying some stuff up top and wiping some stuff down. We don't want that crud to come down through here. And once we get stuff done top side, then we'll come up here or back inside and uh, clean up inside there and maybe we'll take care of all the issues we will all the issues solved okay a little rvac maintenance we got the going off up top here right just take your four screws out take the shroud off, you're going to want to check for uh, animals, squirrels, ducks, no I'm just kidding, wasps, mud daubers. Turn off your power. Okay, got the shroud off and got all the animal stuffs out, bug nests and such. And then I'm starting to clean the condenser, which is this piece over here. And I'm using a combination of a vacuum and a vacuum brush. A lot of folks use an air compressor to blow it out with compressed air. I don't happen to have one, so I'm improvising. So rather than blowing, I'm sucking. Sucking the stuff back in, rather than trying to blow it through. Just the way I'm doing it, because it's what I got. And yeah, just gonna clean it all up, and then pop up on this puppy here for the exchanger. And then clean this all up too. Show you a video of that in a second. Okay, changed out my driver to a 5 16 nut driver to take off a few of this, the bolts, or sheet metal screws. I think there's about six I gotta take off to get this thing to come open and then right along this edge it bends up and you get access to underneath. Show you that in a second. All the bolts are out, sheet metal screws. I took out seven and this is kind of a little tricky sticky. A little tab on my particular Dometic AC that keeps that plastic thing down. Uh, it keeps the metal thing down. It'll raised bump there, sun might be blocking it. Otherwise, you just kind of get under there and kind of work it and get it open like that there. And then just kind of bend it, oops. Bend it and then lift it on up. Get that's the reason that thing bends right there. And then look, hey, look at that. Looks like mold. And then that looks like a uh, heat exchanger. That's where the hot air from the coach goes in, goes through there, cool, gets cooled, goes right back down. That needs a little bit of work, a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of maintenance. Every six months or a year you should be doing this. I waited a little too long, a little over a year. So that's what I get to deal with. But we've got some good products that will take care of this issue. we got um, this product here, mold control, uh, anything that you want to make a barrier for that. And then I'm not sure where my other one went, but uh, it's a uh, cleaner for these grates. Locally available at an RV dealership, Home Depot, things like that. There we go, moving on. All right, well there's my other product that I got. Air conditioning coil foaming cleaner. And the good thing is, you don't have to rinse this one. 
you can, but you don't have to. Because with condensation, which happens in these fins, it will work fantastic. Now, if you're gonna clean your other fins, once you're your evaporators, those it wouldn't work on. You would have to rinse those because those don't produce any condensation. That's just a cooling area where the air blows through it. So, anyway, there you have it. We're moving on. We're gonna spray. And it smells citrusy fresh too. So, oh, one thing to do is cover all your wires because this stuff does not play well with wires. One thing that uh, this foaming cleaner came with was a fin safe brush. You want to take very good care of these things. You bend them, they lose their cooling power. You bend a lot of them, your AC just doesn't want to work and you have to spend a lot of hours with a toothpick straighten them out. So this little brush helps for scrubbing and kind of straighten them out a little bit. So anyway, there you go. piece that might be often overlooked is cleaning the inside of your shroud. Number one, obviously checking for damage, which I do have a little bit, and I'll need to replace the shroud fairly soon. But I can at least keep the inside clean, so it keeps all grossness out of the AC system, right? Even though it's a sealed system, you might get a little few things rolling in there. So we're almost done up top. We'll be uh, going downstairs, downstairs, uh, downstairs. I'll be going down the ladder over there. Anyway, and finishing up inside, and then we should be good, and we'll test it here in a little bit. And make sure it smells a little better, and Lori feels good. We're all dried up, all cleaned up, so it's now time to put everything back together. And we got to put this little bad boy down, back in there, fold it on this area here. Not fold it, but just put it back together. Put the screws in, and then put the shroud back on. Um, the shroud, you make any repairs to, Maybe some uh, non-leveling die core, nice and flexible, could fix a little crack or two. Uh, if it's on the outside, you can put some tape on it, I guess, or maybe even Gorilla Glue. But be careful with that because it expands a lot. At any rate, we're going to finish up up here and go downstairs uh, into the coach and finish up down there. Uh, from what I can tell you, it smells a little bit better from where we are. Yay. i to do this one hand is here, putting this thing back together. Um, this side goes in first, it bends over a little bit, and I uh, want to make sure that the insulation stays intact. Bend that side in, get it over there, and then remember I showed you before, there's a little tab down here, a little plastic thing right there, see, yep, there it is, and then just kind of push it into place. And line up your screw holes. You can, through there to see, make sure it's all lined up, the insulation, and just screw it back together. And I see a few cobwebs I still need to hit the hit with a vacuum. All right, sometimes I leave spare parts out, and uh, that's a bad thing. Sometimes it's not a bad thing when you leave spare parts out. Maybe you made it better. Anyway, in this instance, this little uh, foam dealer, dealie, um, needs to go back in. I took that out right from, whoops, right from about there. You can kind of see the shiniest, shiniest area. That's where it was. It kind of holds this panel down and tight and keeps everything tight and keeps things from vibrating. Right, because you don't want noises coming from your AC. You just want cool air. So this bad boy just kind of stuffs right in there. It was glued in, but I just rub it, rub it, or push it a little closer, and it works out just fine. So there you go. Now I'm gonna put the shroud on, um, and then uh, go inside. All right. Remember I told you about the cracks and the cowl. I'll have to come up back up and fix that right there, and then this one right there. There it could use some lap sealant, non-leveling, because it'll stay in place. And this one, hmm, maybe tape. <laughs> anyway, you don't want this thing flying off down, going down the road. That uh, could be dangerous for people behind you. 
and certainly can be Okey-dokey. dangerous to your RV. Now we're on, in the coach, obviously, right? You can see everything in here. And we had put cellophane, Lori put cellophane up top there to keep things from falling in. I'm going to take that off now and clean up inside here. Just uh, very simply clean it on up. Oh, and drop a thumbtack on my foot. So I'm going to do this, use two hands. All right, so I took the whole entire panel off just by popping out the two little covers there to take go that screw, that screw, and that screw on either side, so six screws. And I took it all off and got up in there in the inlet and cleaned that all up with uh, the mold control stuff. And then also cleaned it off here. There, my lovely assistant just <coughs> held it up for me. Mold control, seems to work so far. We'll see. But uh, yeah, so first one's done. And I'm gonna put the panel back up on there, and then we're gonna make sure it works. One. And uh, this one didn't seem quite as bad as the front one, but we're still gonna do it, give it the same treatment. I spray it down with that mold control. I already did it front top there, so we'll check this. We'll get that all done. There's a mud do oop. There's a mud dauber nest. That to take care of. Just pull that out, and I'm just gonna take this this off just like I did before. And all you gotta do is just put your little and that one and that one. Alrighty, the mud dauber. They sometimes crack in your hands, but that's just kind of what you gotta do. Just gently pull it off. Hey, look. Looks like the guy from Scream, doesn't it? Whoa! Anyway, <laughs> it's a little wasps make houses in there. Mm -hmm. And how'd they get in there? Well, looking up in there, there's a little light hole. Hole light. Gotta fix that. Alright, so now we got everything off. And we're gonna do our little famous mold control. Just a couple of squirts up here, not too many because it'll drip. And I am right above the bed. And I already got warned once by somebody to put something on the bed. And do you think I have? Heck no. Somebody else just did though, look. Magic. Something on the bed. Okay, anyway, okay. I'm gonna squirt and rub, rub it up, dub. But you've covered my stuff up in there. Everything looks pretty good. I better check that. <laughs> looks kind of dirty itself. So there you have it. Yeah, it does look dirty. The fan. So we will do our best to. Get everything out. Before it drips, I just dripped a couple of times. Three times. Every six months to a year. So I'm individually wiping the veins, veins on the output fan. A little bit of the mold control. Just, you know, we want to make sure we do all we can to keep any pathogens or microbes from, from going through. But there you can see how dirty the rag is now. And then you should hopefully see a little cleaner fan. Well, at least the leading edges of it. All right, finishing up. I'm gonna put this back up in there and we're gonna move these out of the way a little bit. Remember, don't play with live wires. Don't turn your power back on yet. Get out of the way. Put this back in. This kind of grooves. These little grooves here go up in there. And it just kind of slides in. Alright, like that. And you're making sure, make sure your holes line up. Together. That's it, buddy. Boop. On. When you're using one of these bad boys, if you have an adjustable torque, adjust it. Because if you have this thing on high power, you're going to snap plastic. So I've got mine way down to two. So you heard the ratcheting sound when I bottomed out the, the, the screw there, right? So one or two will work pretty well. You can always come back with a regular, well, bigger than this, but regular screwdriver and 
tighten them down if you feel the need. It's only going to fall on your bed, so not a big bad deal. And we're in. Yep, I feel it. Honey, you did it. Oh, and it smells so much better. Yep. I'm so excited. I can't believe that that, I can't believe it had mold in it. Thank you for fixing it, honey. You did such a great job. Yay. Ah, oh, it's nice and cool.